الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا صدق الله العظيم My respected brothers, elders in Islam, mothers and sisters who are listening at home, this short Quranic verse that I have recited has the nearest meaning. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ Without any doubt, the masajid belong to Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا so do not pray to anyone, do not worship anyone along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, we are going through a very difficult time. COVID-19 has caused havoc amongst mankind and amongst humanity. So many people were ill, alhamdulillah have recovered. And there are so many people who are ill at this moment in time. And there are so many who have succumbed to the illness and departed from this world. On this blessed occasion of Salatul Jumu'ah, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the shortcomings of those who have departed from this world and grant them maghfira and an elevated status in Jannatul Firdaus. And we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all those people who are ill, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a swift, lasting and complete recovery. And at the same time we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every human being from this and any other illness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicate this illness from the face of the earth. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Precautions need to be taken. That's why we see the condition in the masjid that we are seeing today when numbers are restricted. Face mask has been, or the wearing of the face mask has been implemented in the masjid that you must wear it. And these precautions need to be taken that the medical professionals have advised and the government has also implemented upon us that places of worship can remain open with these conditions. And after taking the precautions, then we leave the rest in the hands of Allah Almighty. That is the reality of Qadr and Taqdeer. But Alhamdulillah on this occasion, on this particular lockdown, our government has given us the permission to keep the houses of Allah, places of worship, that they can remain open. And it seems as though that they have understood that the well-being of the insan, and we should understand that the well-being of the believer is dependent upon the masajid and the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The peace of mind, the sukoon e qalbi that one can achieve attending the masjid, coming into the masjid, I am sure that you will agree cannot be achieved in the four walls of our homes. And the rewards and the benefits as regards to congregational salah and just coming into the masjid cannot be achieved at home. And something we understand from a, a narration recorded by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi on the authority of Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that a person who performs congregational salah in the masjid then that salah is 25 or 27 times greater than the salah that is performed in the homes 
or in the bazaars and markets. وَذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ And the reason why Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam says, إِذَا تَوَذَّفَ أَحْسَنَ الْوُضُوء That a person performs wuzu and he performs a wuzu in the best of ways. ثُمَّ أَتَى الْمَسْجِدِ And then he comes to the masjid. لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا الصَّلَىٰ Coming to the masjid, the only intention is the performing of the salah. Nothing else is urging him to come to the masjid. Only intention is salah. Then he will not even take a footstep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise one degree in his status as far as the hereafter is concerned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive for him one sin. And the angels will make dua for him. The angels will send salutations and blessing upon that person. Whilst he, in the, whilst he is in the masjid performing salah, Allahumma salli alayhi, the angels will say, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, have send, um, send blessings upon this individual. Send blessings upon this individual. Allahumma rahamhu, O oh Allah, have mercy on him. Allahumma rahamhu, have mercy on him. And this will continue, ma'lam yuhdith fihi, ma'lam yudha fihi, until he remains in the state of wuzu and until he does not harm anybody else. Salatu ahadikum, Nabi Ali salatu was salam, then say that a person remains in salah. Makaniti salatu tahbisuhu. Until the time a person remains waiting for the salah. Now, just understand from this narration that whilst we remain in the masjid, the angels are making dua for us. I'll have mercy on this individual. Have mercy on this individual. Angels are sending their bless, bless, blessings on the people who are attending the masjid. Can this be achieved at home? Man ghada ila al-masjidi wa raha. A person who comes to the masjid in the morning and in the evening. A'adda Allahu lahu nuzulahu min al-jannati. Kullama ghada aw raha kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The person who in the morning and the evening comes to the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares for him a feast from jannah in the morning or for the evening. And the status of a person who performs or who comes to the masjid in order to perform the congregational salah, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam explains in a narration recorded by Ibn Majah and Tirmizi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ rajul That when, see, when you see a person, يَعْتَادُ masajid Who is frequent in the masajid, person is coming, going in the masjid, فَشْهَدُوا لَهُ iman. Bear witness to that person's faith and iman. Why? قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Because Allah says in the Quran that those people who, have, who believe in one Allah and who believe in the last day maintain the masajid Allah, maintain the masajid and the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Numerous ahadith are there and Quranic verses as regards to the importance and the benefits of the masajid. So on the one hand, you have these narrations as regards to the importance, the benefits of the houses of Allah. And on the one hand, you have messages coming down one by one, slowly, slowly trickling away in the last eight to ten days. Close the masajid, close the masajid, close the masajid. On the one hand, you have that. And I'm very sorry to say that I'm surprised at the number of people who send messages, direct or indirect, that Mr. Khan is saying this, or somebody else is saying this, that close the masajid. I'm surprised to see these messages, and the number of people sending the messages, and how easy it has become for the Muslim, for the believer to say, close the house of Allah. I would never want that on my head. I would never want that on my head. And I would never be able to make that decision myself. The reason being that I have in front of me the verse of the Holy Quran. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّمْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّمْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا Who can be more unjust and who can be more wicked than that person who, 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 who stops the name of Allah being mentioned in the houses of Allah? And who strives to have them empty, 
no one in there. And in the same verse, and Allah says for these people, "Lahum fi dunya khizyun, wa lahum fi akhirati azabun azim. Lahum fi dunya khizyun." For such people who do this, in this world there is humiliation, and in the hereafter painful punishment. Now, with this verse in front, which Muslim can just come and say, "Close the house of Allah." Close the doors of the house of Allah. Lock the doors of the house of Allah. That house that we, in this particular moment in time, is needing the most. In times of difficulty, in times of suffering, it is these houses that we should be coming to, and our hands should be raised in these houses and seeking protection from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, or seeking eradication from illness, or eradication of the illness. Yes. When the Khalifatul Muslimin, or the government of a country, or the scholars, senior scholars, not like me, senior scholars, when they come together, when they come together and they issue a fatwa like they did in March, then it would be a different issue because it is not an individual's head. Either the government is responsible, or the senior scholars looking at. Or everything around them. If they were to issue that fatwa, then yes, then there would be the permissibility. Otherwise, for any individual to say that this is something very heavy, or should be very heavy on our tongues. And sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel that the reason behind saying this so easily is maybe that that qadr that should be there. Or the value that should be there for the houses of Allah in our hearts and minds that is not there. The elders who came to this country and the elders that went to those countries where there were no masajid and in the beginning they strived in order to build the masajid, the houses of Allah. If they were to be faced with this situation that that house that they built with so much effort and sacrifice close it, how difficult it would be for them to understand. I was reading through. The lectures of Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Taqi Sahib Damad Barakatuhum Al Aliyah, and he was he was writing an account of the first masjid in South Africa, and just just very concluding that that is a massive um, article, but just concluding that article that Hazrat writes that when the Malay when Malaya or Malaysia was conquered by the British, and those people that were fighting hard. In Malaysia, these people were these soldiers were brought to South Africa as slaves. During the day, they were shackled and chained. They were not allowed to perform their salah. In the night, when they were unchained and unshackled, then they used to go in little groups underneath mountains and valleys, and they used to perform their salah. A time came when there, there was a battle between the British and the Dutch, and the British came to the um, to these Malayans. To ask them for help in order to protect um, Cape Town, so these Malayans said on one condition or two conditions. The first condition is that we will be allowed to perform salah, and the second condition was we are allowed to build a masjid. And Alhamdulillah, the Malayans they prevailed against the Dutch. And the first masjid I've not been, but I've checked on the internet. It's named as Awal Masjid. The first masjid in Cape Town was from this sacrifice. They didn't ask for freedom, they didn't ask for wealth and money and property, but they asked for the permission to build a masjid. Now go to them and say to them that masjid needs to be closed for this reason. Would they allow it? And sometimes the narration comes to mind, in which Nabi Ali Salatu was Salam foretold us, "Yati al nasi zamanun." Yati al nasi zamanun a time will come upon the people la yawqa min al islam illa ismuhu that islam will only be there by name wala yawqa min al quran illa rasmuhu and the quran will be there only in written form the hearts will be void of the quran the the, the mouths and the and the tongues will be void of the quran the actions and the amal of the insan will be void of the quran and then the words masajiduhum amiratun مساجدهم عامرة خراب من الهدى أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام the masajid will be nice the masajid will be beautiful but خراب من الهدى it will be void and empty of guidance so are we by our actions when we say close the masjid close the house of Allah think what are we say what are we asking for خراب من الهدى 
that thing that Nabi Ali Salat was Salam foretold is about that the masajid will be there, but they will be empty of guidance, and we want the masajid to be empty of musallis. We are becoming by our actions, by what we are saying, by our statements. We would actually be becoming and you know, those signs of Qiyamah. Do we really t- do we re- do you, do we really want to be from those who are the signs of Qiyamah? May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect myself, protect all of you, and protect each and every individual. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala preserve our masajid, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keep our masajid busy with musalliyin until the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the qadr and the value of masajid in our hearts and keep these masajid and the houses open until the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every one of us, and our families, our communities, and as I said, each and every individual of mankind. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicate this illness from the face of the earth. Amin ya rabbal alameen wa ma alayna illa al bala. I know that there's so many people within our community who are ill. And brothers who, alhamdulillah, on Fridays work very hard and to establish the jamaat, cleaning the masajid. Muhammad, we know, by Suleiman, who is a trustee here as well, who is very ill. Abdul Qadir is ill, Yusuf Bai is ill. And then so many of the musallis as well who are ill. And a special request also came from one of the apas who teaches here. Her mother is very, very ill in Burma. May Allah make dua for all of them. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of them shifa'an, kamilan, ajilan, daiman, mustamirra. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Wa ma alayna illa al-balag.